Hi, my name is Stephanie Carroll. I'm a registered nurse and I work at Southern New England Pain Management and Anesthesia with Dr. Pradeep Chopra in Rhode Island. I work in pain management and I have a primary focus on treating patients with EDS and other comorbidities. I also have EDS myself, so I find that I can truly treat patients from an empathetic point of view. Daily symptom management in EDS is really unique in comparison to other conditions because it's really multifaceted. EDS has so many widespread manifestations, so it's really vital that patients can learn to independently implement self-care. So to whatever extent that we can, just so that they can be as comfortable as possible. While EDS may not have a cure, there are so many things that we can do to keep ourselves comfortable and help ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm so looking forward to sharing them with you today. Thank you for joining us. So just a quick disclosure and disclaimer, I have no conflicts of interest in relation to this presentation or program. I will be discussing a couple of medications and supplements that have off-label uses. Um, also, please ask your physician before participating in any at-home management of your symptoms. Uh, and the content in this presentation is just for general knowledge. So let's just do a quick intro. We're gonna talk about the basics of why patients with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome experience so much pain and discomfort, and then why self-management is important. So we'll talk about some tips for at-home relief of commonly experienced symptoms. So the importance of self-management in EDS. The majority of this presentation, like I said, will be focused on pain management. We'll go through tips and tricks to manage pain and injury prevention. So I personally find that by addressing the root cause of someone's symptoms, we can get better management. So for example, if we continuously try and treat fatigue with a really poor result, it might be because we're not treating the root or underlying cause of the fatigue, which could be something like pain. So we'll talk about how to empower ourselves and manage our symptoms from the root. So the do's and don'ts of self-management, there are a few. It's okay to manage your own symptoms at home. If your doctor or healthcare provider has explicitly said that that's okay, and you've cleared all possible interactions of anything that you're doing with your healthcare team, please do not manage your symptoms at home if you're experiencing a new or worrisome symptom, especially something like chest pain or a severe headache, or you're at risk for other dangerous conditions like aneurysm or aortic rupture, because those can present with pain too. So just really make sure we're knowing our boundaries of what is okay and not okay to self-manage at home. Most things usually are okay, but we just want to make sure. So first I want to talk about something called proprioception. What is it and why does it matter? Proprioception is our own ability to determine where our limbs are in space at any given time. We're all born with this innate ability to tell how our joints are positioned, but in EDS, these things are altered. So the brain is constantly getting information from the joints as to the exact position of our limbs in space. It helps us walk, use our arms, and maintain our posture without tipping over. It prevents our joints from overextending and our muscles from overstretching. But of course, in EDS, it, the proprioception is a bit poor. So at least 70% of our proprioceptive input comes from the connective tissue. The rest is it if it comes from our senses like seeing and hearing. So on the right side over here, you'll see the major proprioceptors. Um, the receptors are muscle spindles and Golgi tendons. So there are things called mechanoreceptors also that are on the skin over the limbs and those send signals to the brain. These may be altered in EDS causing negative proprioception. So how does poor proprioception cause pain? You may be wondering. This leads to constant injuries, and this is because of a lack of spatial awareness and constant hyperextension. It is very important to promote healthy proprioception because it reduces injuries, hyperextension of the joints, and therefore pain and fatigue. There are many ways where we can do this at home, such as wearing compression garments, doing an at-home exercise program prescribed just for you by a physical therapist, or engaging things in things like aqua therapy. My favorite part about compression garments is that they are able to be implemented independently by the patient. And these garments are tolerated extremely well by the vast majority of people, of course, with a couple exceptions. But they work in promoting proprioception because 
like I said, the brain uses those signals from the skin to understand the position of the joints and the muscles. So wearing compression clothing can help our brains to understand the positions of our body parts. And so they stimulate those skin's proprioceptors and they also help you obtain joint stability. It's important to be aware of things called pain modulators. So if you're not making huge strides in managing your pain, you might need to look at addressing other conditions if you have them. For example, mast cell diseases can be extremely painful and may need to be treated a little differently than EDS. So some key points that we just talked about are the connective tissue in EDS is a bit lax and weak. Proprioception, which is known as that joint position sense, is commonly very poor in patients with EDS, but there's things we can do to manage that. And comorbidities that commonly occur alongside EDS can play a role in the presence and the severity of the pain and symptoms that you may experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's talk about pain management principles. So because the pain that EDS patients experience comes from a variety of implications, such as things that are structural in the body or neurologic, it's best to use a variety of interventions to help us and really target that pain from all aspects. So remember that we don't just wanna treat the pain itself, but the underlying cause of the pain as well, so that the pain is both treated and managed. When we have pain, we need to be critical thinkers. So when I have a patient present to the clinic in pain, my first step in the nursing process is always to assess the patient. So does the patient have structural pain or neuropathic pain? So nerve pain is neuropathic pain, which is a pain as a result of nerve damage and structural pain can be things like arthritis or dislocating a joint. Um, the most common is a combination of the two. But I'm telling you this because interpreting the source of a patient's pain is vital for proper treatment. So if we have a patient with EDS who has presenting with shoulder pain, right, it's imperative that we understand the underlying cause of the pain before intervening because there are multiple potential causes of pain. Joint pain in EDS can be caused by dislocation, subluxation, spasms, instability, or nerve or vessel impingement. So we really need to make sure that we're finding the underlying cause of the pain and you can work together with your healthcare team before proceeding to manage your symptoms at home. There's no doubt that dislocations and subluxations can be really, really painful, um, but the pain is predominantly not coming from the bones themselves. It's coming from muscle spasms around the joint and from the abnormal stretch of the joint capsule and ligaments. So there is a difference between the two um, anatomically, not in the amount of pain that they cause necessarily. So the reason that these happen in EDS so frequently and without trauma is because the core component of the altered collagen structure leads to the loose and lax connective tissue. But once we're aware of the factors that contribute to dislocations and subluxations, we can begin to address them. So while we might not be able to address our connective tissue directly, there are other things that we can address such as increasing muscle tone and being really careful not to overextend our joints or to overstretch them. So to manage a subluxation or dislocation at home, the patient really wants to follow their healthcare team's advice and take any prescribed medications to alleviate things like spasms, pain, or swelling first. Next, we wanna encourage you to support the joint and maintain it in a very neutral position. And then next you can use heat if it's safe and appropriate. This can help immensely in relaxing muscles and aiding in pain relief in order to Put the joint back in its proper position. This is ultimately done by things like self-correction and that is definitely best taught individually by a physical therapist, but if the patient hasn't been taught this yet, then sometimes gentle massage around the joint in combination with heat medications and support is often enough to guide the joint back into proper alignment. If the patient has a traumatic dislocation, then they definitely should be seeking emergency care. Um, the recommendations here are are more towards micro trauma and everyday misalignments. 
So there are some examples of structural pain that someone with EDS may experience. Um, of course, this is pain within the skeletal system. This may be something like tendonitis, bursitis, or arthritis, and of course, dislocations and subluxations. So like I mentioned, we just want to aim the treatment at addressing the underlying cause. This is a question I get very, very frequently. Are braces bad in EDS? Are they harmful? What are the pros and cons of using braces? The answer is no. Braces are ultimately not harmful if they are used correctly, key term correctly. So braces can maintain a joint in a neutral position, which is good. They help the patient avoid hyperextension. They also help with the joint position awareness we talked about earlier, that proprioception. So the patient should start using them very, very gradually. And then also gradually decrease their use as you regain strength. Kinesiotaping is, all, kinesiotaping, sorry, is also a really good alternative. Braces do not make muscles weak. Um, it's a common misconception. Um, no brace should ever be tight enough to stop the muscles from moving. In fact, a brace should stabilize the joint so that the muscles can move the joints more efficiently. So let's talk about the types of tissue injury that I mentioned earlier, microtrauma and macrotrauma. So as with any type of tissue injury, um, we should assess our own circulation, like the color of our skin to make sure we have proper blood flow. This will also help us know if we need to go to the emergency room or not. So we can have um, some abilities to distinguish between the two. So this is macro trauma. So as you can see here on the left-hand side, these two images were taken of a woman after she fell backwards. She landed on her hand and she had two complete finger dislocations. This is definitely considered a macro trauma. It has significant inciting injury preceding the event, which leads to complete dislocation and sometimes things like fractures, hematomas, or swelling. Um, these patients should seek emergency care. And then on the contrast over here, we have microtrauma, which are small repetitive traumas resulting in a constant tissue breakdown. This tissue breakdown is pretty much invisible on, to, on the outside. So when we overstretch our muscles and ligaments, even by doing everyday tasks such as vacuuming, chopping food, or even dusting, um, this can be really common and still damaging. So this like I said, comes from the overstretching of ligaments and the tissue is fragile and breaks down injury um, easily and it takes longer for the injury to heal. Now we'll talk about headaches in EDS. There are many common causes of headaches in EDS, whether they are neurological in nature, musculoskeletal, or from other conditions that occur alongside EDS. And each of these, like I mentioned, will need their own specific treatments. Um, neuropathic pain, including migraine headaches. Migraines are really, really common in patients with EDS and dysautonomia. We find that a lot of our patients respond well to using oxygen at home to increase the oxygen to the brain. Also magnesium supplements, cold packs, or alternatively, some patients prefer heat. Um, essential oils, um, these may be contraindicated with MCAS, so just be mindful of that. Resting in a dark, quiet room, getting enough sleep is also really good. Um, ultimately, the best thing that you can do is to prevent a migraine before it even happens. So if you have any migraine triggers, um, it would be really good to be mindful of them and avoid them if you can. Now we'll talk about upper body pain in EDS. Thoracic outlet syndrome is a huge cause of upper body pain in EDS. Um, this is due to the instability between the first rib and the collarbone. So patients with this may present with um, pain on both sides, also numbness and weakness in the shoulders, neck, and fingers. There are some home treatments that we can do for thoracic outlet syndrome, um, but before this, you wanna make sure that any type of DVT, which is a blood clot in the arm, is ruled out. This is really uncommon, but it still happens. So um, if you have this type of instability, you um, of course wanna meet with a physical therapist. They can teach you stabilization and exercises that you can do at home. Using kinesiotape is wonderful, as well as different shoulder stabilization 
visualization devices. The one that I have here on the bottom left is the DM orthotics shoulder orthosis, and that's really helpful for a lot of patients that have used it. Um, also, topical medications or the application of heat or ice can provide temporary relief. Patients with EDS often have a lot of rib pain. This is due to loss of proprioception as well as, you know, the muscles of breathing in the diaphragm. They can give you um, pain and a feeling of not having taken a full breath. Um, so ribs subluxing can be extremely, extremely painful. Um, but because it can also cause chest pain, we want to ensure that all tests for the heart and lungs are normal. So always rule that out first. But otherwise, you can do exercises with a foam roller, exercises lying down, core strengthening, and the use of compression garments. So lower body pain and EDS, um, you want to mind your own gait. So the way that you walk, um, the way that you walk, um, if you have EDS, it can often be a little bit abnormal or compensatory in nature. And by that, I mean that you might have like a little bit of a limp. So gait patterns in patients who are able to walk unassisted are usually antalgic, which is that limp I described. Um, so they might hyperextend a little bit around the knees. So you really, really want to pay attention to your feet and ankles. Dr. Pradeep Chopra, who I mentioned I work with, made this amazing image. I just want to thank him for letting me include it because I think it's so informative and easy to understand. So you want to really pay attention to your feet and your ankles, of course, because if the feet and the ankles are unstable here, then they make the knees unstable, which makes the hips unstable, which throws the pelvis off. And this can lead to all sorts of SI joint pain and lumbar pain all the way up the back. So as you see, the feet are really the base basis for this. And if your feet are, and ankles are not stable, then you might have pain further up your body down the line. So you want to make sure you're using correct form fitting shoes and you're not hyperextending at all. There is something called tibiofibular joint instability, which is pain um, below the knee in the lower leg. Um, and you may have thigh pain with this as well. So you just want to be mindful if this is something that you have. Um, proper alignment and bracing can help this. So let's talk about pain that's mixed in nature. And by that, I mean it's structurally and neuropathic in nature. An example of neuropathic and structural pain is craniocervical instability. Um, this is where the spinal ligaments meet C1 and the base of the skull, which is called the occiput. These ligaments are lax and weak and lead to instability in that joint. This can really affect the nerves in the spinal cord and have a ton of symptoms such as neck pain and headaches, as well as neurological symptoms like ringing in the ears, difficulty swallowing, and even vision changes. So this, um, you really want to be mindful of treating at home. You, of course, need a proper diagnosis and the oversight of a physician. But if you have a mild to moderate case, your neck muscles can can be strengthened, which sometimes helps. Um, also, a cervical collar such as the Aspen Vista, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, um, or even kinesio tape. Certain patterns of kinesio taping the neck have been helpful for a lot of patients that I know of. Um, but if you have severe instability, um, you might unfortunately have to look at surgical options. Always, always use extreme caution when exercising or performing any self-care with your neck. We'll talk about muscle pain. The muscles in the body are often really overworked in patients with EDS. This is to compensate for ligament laxity. So a lot of patients have severe muscle pain from hyperextension. Um, something that really helps in this type of muscle pain is magnesium. This can be taken by mouth or topically like a lotion or cream. Um, taken by mouth, it may cause some GI upset. So start off topically first if you can. Um, Epsom salt baths are wonderful um, and it works great without many side effects neuropathic pain and EDS in the brain and spinal cord. Um, we have the brain and spinal cord that make up the central nervous system. We also have peripheral nerves and the autonomic nervous system. Neuropathy can affect 
any of these. Um, neuropathy is unfortunately really difficult to manage at home. However, it, it is possible. Um, heat or ice may help as well as certain desensitization techniques. You can also try something called PEA, which is a supplement. Um, you can take it by mouth as a cream. Um, definitely run that by your doctor first to make sure it's okay. Autonomic or circulatory headaches can be caused by things such as dysautonomia, but they tend to occur in EDS due to vessel wall weakness, so like blood pooling. We can encourage you to have a healthy blood volume and circulation by having the correct salt and fluid intake. You can also try compression leggings or utilizing something called sequential compression boots, which are over here. Those can all be purchased uh, without a prescription. Um, let's talk about GI pain. So the movement of the intestines, which is called peristalsis, this is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So any dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system can affect the movement of the intestines, which can cause bloating, nausea, pain, and changes in bowel elimination habits. Other comorbidities of EDS that cause GI pain can include gastroparesis, MALS, SMAS, dysautonomia, and MCAS, um, which all, of course, require different treatments. So when we have GI pain at home, there seems like there's very little we can do, right? However, there are some at-home self-care things that we can perform, such as finding a diet that works best for us, whether it's low FODMAP, low histamine, um, anti-inflammatory, etc. Some Herbs work really well for nausea, like ginger and mint. You can either eat these, take them as supplements or a tea or use them in aromatherapy. Um, heating pads to the abdomen work well because they promote healthy intestinal movements and they can reduce pain. Um, the BRAT diet is helpful in reducing nausea and vomiting in patients who suffer from that. And in almost all cases, deep breathing and very gentle movements can be helpful with diaphragmatic release and helping your food to move through you the way that it should. Um, some topical medications that we can use, um, these include medical patches for local use. They're just like these medicated patches like Salon Pass. Um, Ted's cream is really, really helpful. Um, that's a proprietary blend of different herbs and supplements, um, and it's definitely worth trying. That's one that can also help with nerve pain. Um, PEA, which I mentioned earlier, um, that can help with nerve pain as well. CBD helps with a variety of different types of pain and can be used topically. Um, Diclofenac gel also helps. That's an anti-inflammatory. Of course, run any of these by your doctor first, and you can also always patch test a very small amount to make sure you don't have any type of allergic reaction to these. Um, medical cannabis is an excellent treatment at home. Of course, this totally depends where you're located. If this is legalized, where I am from, it is legal, but um, you might need to have a prescription or um, you should be under management of a physician to use this. Um, cannabis is a plant with very um, a variety of different medical compounds, um, some of which relieve pain, fatigue, nausea, and muscle spasms. Um, there are certain types that help insomnia and headaches as well. If it's taken in a very low dosage, there's pretty minimal risk of intense side effects. Um, and if THC containing supplements are not legal where you live, that's okay. Ask your doctor or consult with a medical cannabis specialist about maybe using something like CBD, CBG, or CBN for your symptoms. So let's just talk about maintaining a holistic approach, which is addressing the whole body in EDS, not just certain parts of the body, because as we know, the whole body works together and EDS affects the whole body. So um, we also need to address our mind, body and soul throughout all of this. So for support, don't isolate yourself. Talk to friends, family or a support group. Mindfulness is great because chronic pain can be super overwhelming and dealing with this day to day is, you know, a lot. So mindfulness and meditation can help you stay in the present moment and stay calm. Um, getting a therapist or a counselor is a wonderful option. There's really no shame in sharing the heavy toll that EDS can take on somebody. Um, to, so to share that heavy load is, you know, really helpful and they can help you with some personalized recommendations just for you. Make sure you take time for yourself and, you know, give yourself some self-care and relaxation. It's okay to cancel plans if you need to. Find a group of friends who is 
totally get what you're going through and that can be helpful if you just need to rest. Um, pace yourself, this is especially helpful for fatigue. Don't push through fatigue, kind of plan your day ahead of time. Um, if you've heard of the spoon theory, I'm sure a lot of you have, that can be really helpful to look up. Um, and then, you know, just modify the activities that you love so that you can still do them. So like adaptive equipment is great. For example, I love to hike, um, but that's obviously not always feasible with EDS. So um, I've gotten some things like, you know, walking sticks and I find trails that are really good and smooth so that I can still do things that I love instead of just saying, oh, I won't be able to do that because um, I'm not feeling well. You know, there are some types of activities, not all of them, but a lot of them that you can kind of modify just a bit so that you can still do what you love. In conclusion, so self-management really fosters independence and in taking care of yourself. Nobody knows your body as well as you do. There is no cookie cutter, one size all fits solution for EDS, unfortunately. Um, everyone with EDS is so vastly different. So what might work for someone else may not work for you and that's totally okay. Don't give up, keep trying until you find something that gives you comfort. Try not to compare your progress to others. And also just as a note, prevention is better than acute symptom management. So if you can identify the triggers for your pain, it'll be more beneficial to avoid those things like certain motions or exercises, foods or activities that will cause pain versus treating the pain after it's already happened. So make sure you're loving yourself amidst your pain just the way you are. You might be bendy, but you're not broken. This is a little acrostic poem for the word hope. Um, hold on pain ends. I just wanted to include this little quote because it's something that really anchors me when I myself am in a lot of severe or acute pain. It may or may not resonate with you um, since sometimes I know pain seems to not end at all, but I do think that there's so, so, so much hope for us, especially with everything that the EDS Society is doing. Medicine is advancing constantly and our understanding of this complex condition is always evolving. So I hope that some things that you've learned today will positively impact the level of care that you can provide yourself with. Um, here's my contact info. Please feel free to reach out anytime. I am always here if you'd like to talk. Thank you so much.